as might be obvious, we're holding this reception virtually because of the present pandemic and as a precaution uh, toward avoiding in-person gatherings. But maybe it's also most appropriate for this occasion to say that we are gathering in spirit as well as by Zoom. The museum's presentation of Day of the Dead goes back at least 24 years, which I was even surprised to see that we've, been <laughs> we've had it for, for that long. Uh, a testament to the lasting importance uh, of the holiday, its evolution, and its growing presence, presence north of Mexico. Uh, Day of the Dead is celebrated throughout Latin America, as you probably know, on November 1st and 2nd, but is most closely associated with Mexico where it originated. Uh, Dia de los Muertos is marked by festive celebrations to honor the deceased. Cemeteries are cleaned and decorated traditionally. Special foods and candies are brought as offerings. Um, Day of the Dead is a blending of cultures, including indigenous and Catholic traditions, and has continued to evolve over the centuries, taking on forms and imagery at different times, including the iconic Katrina Calavera uh, that came in the 20th century. And, uh, and the observance of Day of the Dead in the United States has grown in recent decades, where its popularity, or it's, where certainly it's blossomed in the popular imagination in a, you know, in a variety of ways. Um, and though we've been hosting Day of the Dead at the museum for nearly a quarter of a century, we've never had one like this, like this one. Um, for all the reasons that we're aware of, this year we moved the exhibition outside into the museum's sculpture garden uh, because of the pandemic. And in some ways that placement makes it even a little bit more traditional in some ways. Uh, maybe it echoes a little bit uh, Day of the Dead in Mexico where observances might take place out of doors and cemeteries and those sorts of things. And also we'll clearly see a strong influence of the pandemic and the events of 2020 on the exhibition itself and the things that were done, which I'm sure we'll hear about from some of the panelists. So on to them. Um, uh, with me this evening are some of the incredible artists and contributors to this year's exhibition. So it's my great pleasure to have with us uh, Leticio Rios Valentin of Danza Azteca Oatly Yolilit Yolizitli. Did I get that right? <laughs> it's a tricky one. Um, and local artists uh, Mario Uribe, Scott Braun, Martin Zuniga, and Peter Perez. Without them, the exhibition would not have been possible. So thank you all so much for the exhibition and for joining us here this evening. Uh, not here tonight, but I want to mention her name uh, is Liz Camino Byers, who's been a long time participant in our exhibition. And while she wasn't able to do it this year, um, she was part of the planning and she's always an inspiration uh, uh, for this exhibit. So, as an opening reception of sorts, we're going to keep this pretty casual and conversational, you know, as though we were mingling together in person, celebrating, honoring the dearly departed, perhaps enjoying a drink and conversation. Um, so, you know, so let your imaginary forces work here so that we, you know, we are talking together, perhaps looking at the exhibition. Um, that being the case, you know, we're kind of casual and unrehearsed and we'll be kind of engaging in a conversation between us and with you, hopefully. Um, so maybe, maybe a great place to start this conversation, maybe is, is I think with, with Leticia, would you like to tell us, you know, maybe about your organization? Uh, your dancing and, and the, uh, the altars that you put in, into the exhibition. Sure, thank you. Um, buenas noches a todos. Uh, as mentioned, I'm Leticia Rios Valentin with Danza Azteca, Ochli Yolilitli. Um, we started the, the dance group in 2011 um, with the purpose of maintaining and preserving uh, the Aztec ways through music, through dancing, through food, through making instruments, to learning a little bit about the Nahuatl language. Um, our group is intergenerational. We have children from the age of three to grandparents. Um, Danza Azteca is a corporal prayer. And throughout the year, we dance, we practice every Friday and Currently not now, but when we're not in, in uh, the pandemic, we would travel at least once a month to different um, cities, uh, sometimes even to Mexico, and meet with other dance groups for ceremony. 
where we could be anywhere from 300 to 900 danzantes at one time. Um, Mexica New Year uh, is the largest uh, ceremony um, here in the state of California. That's the one that holds about 900 danzantes. And so we were invited by um, Martin to, you know, put together uh, an altar or two. Um, and as many folks know, the altars, you know, are, uh, you know, in honor of a family or a loved one, a family member, loved one who has passed on to spirit world uh, or, you know, somebody in community. And so we just got some ideas from the children. We have a yearly, uh, an annual um, velacion or vigil, if you will, before our ceremony honoring water and then the tender harvest of corn, beans, and squash uh, together. And so that, that's how the theme of water for one of the altars and then the Azteca culture for the other altar. Um, and so then the youth, you know, just focused it on water with uh, atecocolis, the, the conch. Uh, Atecocoli is the Nahuatl word for, for the conch. And then candles always, you know, light the way for um, spirits to come to join us in this realm. Um, and they were placed um, honoring the four directions. And then in each of the directions, uh, uh, they are honoring one, the missing and murdered indigenous women. Uh, another direction is honoring Andy Lopez, um, who's here, you know, locally from our community. Uh, and then another one is for George um, Floyd and then Brianna Taylor. Mm. Um, it's a beautiful, again, you know, there's no one way to do an altar. It's what your spirit moves you to do. Uh, the edges of the altar actually have water and the Sampasuchi, the flower, is floating through the water. So I encourage folks to go and see it if they get the opportunity to. And then the other altar is, um, uh, you know, for our traditions. Um, and it has, you know, the traditional food, water, the fire, the elements, all the four elements. Um, uh, one of the statuettes is both the, the la vida y la muerte, life and death. And so on one side, it's, you know, the life of the person. And then the other side is the death, which is currently facing the, the, the altar right now. Um, there's a uh, copili, um, which is the headdress that the Aztecs wear. And it's, you know, at the head of the altar. Um, it, my, there's a picture of my grandmother and great grandmother, Camp Paz de Wisconsin. And, and again, it's a way to, you know, be able to tell their stories and keep their memory alive, honoring their, their, their memory. Um, it's a great way, you know, to, to share stories with your children or with friends. I have two grandchildren. And so, you know, they they ask questions. They got to meet my um, great grandmother when they were little, little boys, but she has since um, passed on. And so things that you see on the altar are opportunities to share experiences that you might have had with a loved one or, you know, different stories. And that's how um, their memory lives on from generation to generation. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Well, Mario, how, how about you? you? You popped up there. Your work in this exhibition had uh, had two lives as an existing sculpture well before the exhibition was kind of transformed for David. Do you want to tell us a little bit about how it originated and uh, where sure. you were? Um, you know, it wasn't my idea originally. Someone, was it you or John, that called me and asked, uh, I, I have been doing Alter the last few years, and uh, you asked um, if I would be interested in doing something in the patio, in the garden rather, um, and use the sculpture that was there called the Peace Tree. Uh, and uh, it seemed very appropriate to me and I jumped on it because that sculpture 
uh, was um, designed with the help of some kids from Roseland, some of whom were friends of Andy Lopez, and uh, in collaboration with some kids from Seoul, uh, Korea, South Korea. And uh, it had to do uh, with um, just using art to, midi to mitigate conflict. And uh, that some of the altars that I've done in the past have all had uh, kind of, uh, were socially conscious or if not politically uh, minded. And this one is, is sort of both. Um, but uh, if you have a chance to go see it, uh, there's words that are cut out of the steel. And then on the bottom, at the very, all the way around, it's, just, it's a hexagon. Um, the words are hate and just nasty words, you know, and um, prejudice and racism and things like that. And uh, as you move up the, uh, the, the tree trunk, uh, the words change and become more neutral and then uh, end up being with peace, love, uh, brotherhood, things like that. And um, so anyway, uh, I had the idea, I didn't know what I would do, but when I went to look at it, um, I, I got the idea of just uh, putting flowers all over the, the, uh, the tree. And also um, adding some buttons that had Andy's image on it. And, uh, and then building a kind of a platform on the bottom uh, where people in the community could come and uh, write messages for Andy. I, I, I've been looking everywhere if anyone knows, for a toy trumpet or a couple of toy trumpets to put on the altar, but I haven't found any. Um, but there are other things that uh, a football and basketball and soccer ball, things that he would enjoy. And, um, I thought of stones um, as a medium for people in the community to write messages and contribute to. So um, there are some uh, pretty strong messages, uh, especially the, the last batch of rocks that stones that came in had uh, very strong language uh, about uh, what's going on about the sheriff's department and everything. And, um, so anyway, some of them are, are beautifully decorated and uh, they're going to keep coming, I have a feeling. Uh, I, I only did 35 stones. I, I painted them white first and handed them out. But uh, I think people, um, they may have already started bringing things to add to the, to the altar, which is what I had intended. Yeah. Um, so anyway, looking, looking at the altar, you, you can see all the words and see all the offerings and uh, it makes sense. And it's something that um, we honor his life, only 13 years, um, but uh, he's played a much bigger role, I think, not only in our community, uh, certainly in my life, but all over the country and, and perhaps, you know, uh, the world. Uh, what's going on uh, when things like that happen should not happen. And so we need to keep it alive, keep the memory alive of Andy and what, he, and what his tragedy stands for and means to all of us. Um, and that's the meaning of the, of the, of the altar. Well, that's great. Thank you. And there were some people who came by and oh, good. and left things uh, in a number of spots. So, <laughs> so thank you. That's that's fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah. how about you, Scott? Your piece is fairly uh, monumental there and has some great elements. You want to tell us about what inspired your piece? And I drew this thing, I guess, as part of a class about twenty years ago. And um, Peter kindly asked me to sketch it up again and um, possibly build it. And so I'm uh, almost 100% finished, but I, I left it at a finish point. It, it looks a little funny right now because it looks more like some kind of plant thing coming out of the ground without the, uh, the heads of the Quetzalcoatl. Mm. But um, for people who've seen it or are going to see it, um, 
come back in a few days and <laughs> it'll be 100 percent complete i can you know i was going to bring one head up but i had a moment of clarity and uh turned around in Glen Ellen and came back here and got on this so, um it's beautiful and thank you peter for asking me to do this well, and thank tell all us of you more about the elements in it yeah, yeah. tell us the, the thing i wanted element. to say um the Kessel Quaddles are coming out of the sun. So at the top is the sun. So I did a little bit of research on this, you know, to make sure there was uh, culturally, you know, bringing in the stories. Um, my idea is I want the younger generation to know these stories and to know who these characters are and these figures are and how they relate to the history of Mexico and the culture of Mexico. And, um, this piece tries to do some blending. It's sort of a colonial looking door. Um, the Quetzalcoatls are coming out of the sun, which is the paper tissue piece at the top that a young lady I know made. And they come down and they will be bringing gifts of um, chocolate, chocolate. And one will be in his mouth with bones because one of the things that um, he did when he was creating people is he dropped the bones and that's why everybody's different sizes. Mm. And so I think that's a neat story. I thought of this later as I was telling somebody because of, um, you know, young men and women uh, dealing with body image issues and, you know, not looking like somebody, well, Kelsey dropped the bones, so <laughs> don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> I hope that, you know, maybe some person who is a real storyteller can come and bring these stories and, you know, do something like that. That's how I, one thing I thought would be fun way to bring the kids into it. Oh, yeah, awesome. um, Peter had, you know, different people made different contributions to this, but Peter had the, the brilliant idea of putting the, the papel behind on the boxes. The, um, the steps going up are marigold petals is the confetti on the steps and just the, the traditional flower that wakes the dead, you know, that, that smell of those flowers and kind of stole an idea from Coco and imagining <laughs> that marigold bridge. So this is kind of a marigold stairway up to the doors. And I, I see the doors as kind of a portal. So maybe the niches are, you know, that marigold door um, is something very ethereal. And so the niches are where the dead, you know, maybe come and see us, you know, or we, we connect with them through that is, is the idea. The heart um, is just a heart because of love and because um, Quetzalcoatl, when he came out of the sun, he'd been hiding there for a while. I don't remember exactly why. Maybe somebody can fill me in, Mario or uh, Martin or Peter, I don't know. Or Leticia, um, maybe you know this one, but um, he was in this, he was in the sun and he came out and he saw this cave where he'd been hiding and he saw the people were suffering and he had compassion for them. And I don't know exactly if that's when he brought chocolate or, you know, but he, he had compassion on the people when he came out of the sun and brought them gifts and came to help them. Um, that's the best I understand if I'm totally off base, you know, please correct me. But um, I learned about Day of the Dead from a, um, teacher in Sacramento, uh, Mamie Scott, who not only was a drill sergeant with Spanish, but taught us the cultures of Latino America. He me introduzco a la tradición de Día de los Muertos, brought me to the tradition of Day of the Dead. And that was something I learned about in high school, and I thought it was a beautiful tradition. Um, I started making art around this, you know, periodically starting at age 22. Um, and this piece is beyond what I could have imagined in many ways, and it's far more challenging than I could have imagined. Um, but I, I just hope those stories come back. I hope, that's my hope, is that um, these stories will come back. And I have one more idea, which is to print some of those up and make those the bones in Quetzalcoatl's mouth. So go get, go get a bone. You know, in his other mouth will be Hershey's Kisses and Dove little bites. And so that'll be the chocolate. I, I looked and looked for a cacao palm and I struck it. And I figured it's it's Halloween-ish because it's Dia de los Muertos in the Estados al Norte. And so <laughs> throw some chocolate in it. And that will, I don't know, the stories and the candy and the, it's about the kids. 
and keeping the traditions alive and remembering those who went before. And I just got a 15% battery, so I'm going to change background and plug in. <laughs> That's great. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> that sounded great. Uh, real quick, before we just move on, I just wanted to, to say, you know, the museum, just as we've kind of transitioned uh, to bring free online public programs during this kind of challenging time, um, I'm just putting it out there to everyone to, to please consider becoming a member, renewing your membership, or, or making a contribution to support uh, the Museum of Sonoma County and our efforts so we uh, can keep bringing programs like this and continue with uh, Day of the Dead. You can text the word uh, program to 91999 or even go to museum sc slash donate. So to put that out there as we've kind of done these online programs, we're keeping all our programs kind of free. So uh, for support to keep those going. Um, so let's move on. To, um, yeah. Was Peter, Peter and Martine, I don't know, maybe you guys want to tag, maybe you want to tag team this one, because you, you were both part of the original planning for the exhibition uh, and worked together on the, the, the COVID, the mask sculpture that's out there. Um, so I thought maybe I'd let you uh, uh, tag team a little bit um, and talk about um, what your inspirations were and what kind of imagery you used on the, uh, on the pieces. Uh, so we Love to hear about that. I don't know. You guys want to pick who goes first? <laughs> well, uh, I'm going to give the honor to Peter because uh, Peter was the one that came up with the design of the mask. And I his design to, to help him out. But Peter needs to explain the beginning of the mask. Peter? All on off, you, Peter. Uh, it began at one of our early meetings about what we were going to do, you know, because of the conditions and uh, the new uh, changes and suddenly like, you can't have a big opening because people will breathe on each other and blah, blah, blah. And it turned into this, well, why don't we take it back to traditional roots where it belongs outside on the ground, you know? And Martin said, oh, we should put like 200 crosses, you know, out <laughs> in the garden. I go, that's not enough. You know, and so one thing led to another, and suddenly I'm like drawing this out. It turns into a mask with lots of crosses on it, you know. And then we got to thinking about it more, and we talked and did this and that. And I had lots of blow ups of images that I've done, and I took those images uh, and ripped them apart, just tore them apart, and then glued them back onto the surface of the mask. And that was representing the fabric of customs, the fabric of our nation, the fabric of the world being ripped apart and torn apart, you know, and tossed into the whatever is going to happen. And then on top of that, we got international flags from all over the world. I said that, I thought it was so funny. Uh, uh, these international flags represent that the entire world is suffering from this, you know. And then on top of the flags, we put all these crosses of all the dead people representing like like a new normal for us as it were. And uh, then as you go to the back side of the uh, mask, it transitions into a saint of death with his arms reaching out, big hands, and his entire like uh, grim reaper robe on the inside is full of viruses. <laughs> made of Japanese lanterns, which Jet Li told me. And, uh, <laughs> and then we designed all these uh, things on it. And the other thing that was really interesting, Robert uh, Vendwally volunteered or you know, said, I can build the structure for you, which is really in the end was the most important part because it would, never would have gotten there the way uh, you know, I had originally conceived it. So, and a lot of that was Martine as far as like, you know, fill me in, Martin. Uh, you know, how we're going to make this, uh, what's gonna work, what doesn't work. I'm not a marker person, but I have a new skill now. You know, and <laughs> and I, I could be a graffiti artist too, look out. And uh, uh, the whole thing is just to wow. this crossroad in history that we are all experiencing. And me as a young person said, in the future, this is what's going to happen. Here we are. Who knew, you know? 
And uh, I think it's all part of this whole uh, experience of the whole world changing in, in, in this moment and this time and on all levels. On the mask, there are things like we suffered the fire, there are flames going across it. There's a, down in a corner, there's the border wall that never happened, you know. In fact, I think a hurricane blew it over. And uh, things like that, they're just little bits. And there's like lottery cards, there's like, you know, little suggestions of things on the mask. And, and uh, you know, I, I think it's, it turned out rather extraordinary. Martin. It's a mask, it's a mask for 2020. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. <laughs> to, cover, to cover all that. With Peter, when, when we went from the mask, uh, and then we took, uh, to bring uh, partners for the mask, we brought these cubes there, in there, and they're made out of um, pipe, metal pipe, with saran wrap around and that I invite other artists, Peter and I, and two other women with uh, one student and five kids that came and worked on them. So we kind of, uh, like Peter said, this was unique. We brought it out to the garden and there was a chance for us to put bigger pieces like the mask, the mask is what, like around 18 feet across and around 10 feet high? It's uh, eight feet high and 10 feet on each side. And yeah, so 20. Yeah. You know, so it has and, yeah. and, and the one of the cubes is a 10 by 10 by seven feet high, and which we wrapped in saran wrapped, and we had four walls that we can do something honoring also what happened in this year, kind of. So we have uh, the justice that we lost. She's on one side. On the other side, it's uh, a Chicana is being made, like a uh, skull of a Chicana. On the other side, a student worked on it, did some calaveritas. Um, and then we had uh, one of our artist friends that she just lost her aunt. So she went and did imagery of how she felt about her aunt. So with these pieces, what I put with the cubes, they're accompanying the mask, kind of a, what I like is also to bring the community so they can bring their own art into what they think is Dia de los Muertos. So when I bring in kids, they were nine years, nine, ten, four little girls that came, they worked on it, their expression of this year for Dia de los Muertos. So they put their expression on it. Uh, and you'll be able to tell when you walk around which ones are the kids' imagery and, and then look closer because they did try to put their hardest and their heart into it. So this experience for me, uh, bringing in what I use for street art to bring it into the Dia de los Muertos with students and with other artists like Peter, they joined in, Lucero Vargas, they joined in, uh, Magali, it, it was great uh, for us to work together in an event. And I'm saying it like this, it's a Mexicana, a Chicana. Peter, what do you consider yourself? I'm a Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and me too. And uh, join, uh, yeah, and join together to get that kind of uh, group, you know? Martin, I have a I have an image of you guys in process. You want to show? Because I think it was like great to see. Uh, kind oh, of please! Yeah, that'd be great. Can you, <laughs> can you see that? Yeah, yeah, me with my Charlie Brown. See, I'm a true Santa Rosa guy. <laughs> yeah. Me with oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so this image right here, I was getting it prepped because it's a lot of spray paint. So I do not, uh, the student that went that day was my son. He
he went to uh, narrate to his classroom how we were going to build this in the museum. Zoom class it was, yeah. Yes, he did Zoom class from there. So I prepared this uh, wall for him so he can just go with the markers, which the markers he can use because I don't allow him to use the spray paint. I do not allow him with spray paint. <laughs> I want to say that twice. Uh, and he got to work on it uh, later on. When you guys get there, you'll recognize that flower and then the calaveras, he made the calaveras next to it. And back there is the mask, masked on. It has a mask on the top <laughs> that, that Peter and I worked. Peter, go ahead. Uh, I think it's sort of interesting, the sort of very kind of um, uh, old world stuff that comes out of this in this new situation not only placing this event outside uh i'm very uh fortunate to be working with the museo in anaheim and also with windsor martin and i work with windsor as well and they are creating outdoor events and some of these things would be great to put these pieces together what really works great and you know what doesn't you know and also it's a whole new venue of what a gallery is, you know, it's like one of the new changes and there are a lot of like online galleries and things like that, but to take it outside, uh, this particular event takes it back to its roots. Yeah, correct. You know, one of my, one of my favorite things to bring out to the community is colors, shapes, you know, of course, but color. So on this one, we made sure that we got the oranges on the mask, the yellows on the mask, and then we added our oranges and you know to our work, so they all can blend in with like uh, let these altares. They have the real stuff on them. They have the simpasuchil, you know, on the entrance. Also, uh, Peter, this is uh, kind of uh, Cynthia's. Uh, Oh Peace yes, in the center. Cynthia yeah. is the person that got me involved with this wonderful celebration of the Day of the Dead at the uh, museum. And um, uh, they go like, we're gonna do a Day of the Dead, but we don't have anything. I said, come over, I have a whole bunch of stuff, you know, and that's how it began. So with the passing of her, and she was so involved with this, uh, with all aspects of it, we've created a very special little altar that uh, I thought was a wonderful idea. And I was talking with Elizabeth and, and she was suggesting it would be something to have a planter with a permanent plant in it. So I just happened to have a container that would be good for that and a table that I could spray paint. And uh, we created sort of an instant altar uh, for Cynthia. So she would be here at this celebration as well. Mm -hmm. So um, please do check it out and uh, a very special person. And again, the year of the women, we have uh, Justice Bader on the uh, one panel and she has Day of the Dead the face painting. She liked it. And uh, we have- uh, Too much. Yeah, and uh, the whole thing is like, everything that's going on here, year of the woman, Hispanic month, uh, Day of the Dead, and all these other things are sort of just colliding together in this new form, you know, that will emerge somehow. This oh. image that you guys are looking at right now is one of Leti's image. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's uh, Leti's altar with the headdress, and the headdress is covered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and also uh, in the corner, yeah. in the upper left-hand corner, is the uh, life and death uh, statuette there. Yes. The uh, marigolds mm -hmm. in the front and the cross there is a super traditional way in like Oaxaca and other places where it's celebrated in Mexico where they make beautiful designs with marigolds and marigold petals. And this is like so incredibly traditional that uh, it really brings uh, authentic, authentic kind of quality to, to the uh, exhibit. The yeah. family um, with the four children that helped create the altar, they are from Oaxaca. And well, so- Well, I can see that on the yes. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They worked on that. Yeah, and so know. this, yeah, I just want to say uh, also it's, again, you know, there's no like one way to do it. You're, 
you're moved by spirit as you're doing it because the the altar that is that we're seeing right now is not even complete. Um, there were more things that were added to. Uh, in the bag is a super elaborate, uh, beautiful feather headdress. It's just mm -hmm. gigantic, you know, and uh, it sits at the front of the uh, altar there, or at the back of the altar. Yeah. So. And it. Mm -hmm. You know what? This was. Uh, ah, there's there an image of Scott to be. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. You want to comment on it, Scott? Did we lose Scott? This is a Quetzalcoatl here, this serpentine looking thing. This is the heart he spoke of. This is the sun that he mentioned in the center, looking like a giant marigold. And then these doors of the paradise, as it were, you know? Who knows what's on the other side of the uh, door? Although I think it's the, a little in, in the, the actual size is a lot bigger. It's, yeah. you know, um, it, uh, so. It's it is like a French door kind of deal. It's wide, or you know? like colonialism, you know. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and, and uh, all those elements that are also part of this history, you know, mm -hmm. which has been going on for over three thousand years. Mm -hmm. You know, it used to be so, head on the mantle, but now we have sugar skulls. <laughs> yeah, the, all the little squares that you see there on the door. Um, people can come and place a picture of a loved one in those little doors or, you know, little miniature things until they fill up. Mm -hmm. uh, from I, what I, I heard from him earlier today. Nice, nice. I see there's something at the top as well already, so that's cool. Yes, there's a few things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does anyone out there have any uh, inquiries or stuff, uh, questions? Well, here, I'll share this this one more that gives you the example of a... Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I better stretch it. Can you stretch it out? May expand. Yeah. yeah. Make sure. Now. You want yeah. it zoomed? Zoomed, yeah. Right. We're like, I, why are we leaning over that way? <laughs> <laughs> She, it's really great. I think she was very excited to be a part of our. Uh, you know, she, it's gorgeous. We, we tried, we tried to put different, like, you know, different. We looked for the whole eye kind of flower around her eye, and mm -hmm. no, she didn't like it. Uh, we tried to maybe do some cheekbones for Dia de las Muertas. No, nope, she didn't mm -hmm. like it. <laughs> Do we ended up with a little tiny heart on the nose and? Peter did some like little tiny papel picado under the eye. Yeah, and, and a thing on her forehead as well. On her forehead. Oh, yeah. 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 Is, you know, it wasn't going to be a, like one of those, oh, paint me up. No, she yeah. didn't want that. Step back to look at it. She smiled and said, this is cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I want to add also that being there and seeing the process of both of you, you know, creating her. Um, is also magic, you know, um, from, from one, you know, like I'm seeing her now, but the day before she didn't even have her collar, that's her signature <laughs> collar. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I came in the next day and, oh, you know, she has this beautiful collar on. And then today I went and I saw, um, you face. know, what her face paint. Yeah. On the, on her forehead. And then the dots around her eyes. Uh, and then just seeing the different colors, you know, shade differently and so forth. So um, I mentioned that just so that, you know, when people have the opportunity to go and see when it's in process, it's, you know, it's very magical. And then you see the final result, the end result. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> this is uh, the beginning of a new uh, way to uh, have a opening too. Yes. Sure is. So, one of the best experiences that I have ever had working with a team here in Santa Rosa was this. You know, I mean, it's a team uh, after all this pandemic. One of the 
experiences that I had this year that has been good has been this experience. I yeah. got to walk around with my mask on, walk around other artists, do other work, do other things. See, like Letty was saying, she saw us working, but we saw them working. We saw them building their altares. Mm -hmm. We saw the kids running around and putting stuff down. Yeah, we got to come to life there. It was really nice, you know. And uh, yeah. I, and uh, also like little things at a time, like add some more light here, and we need some yeah. more connection there. And then uh, putting crosses all over the mounds made it feel like a cemetery, yeah. you know, which is kind of the effect we were trying to capture the traditional aspect of this. Right. Right. There Eric, is going to be, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Letty. No, you go ahead with that. And, and I was just going to answer a question that's being asked, but go ahead. Oh, I was just going to add, there's going to be three, three nights that I think we have, I think I was told on calendar, there's going to go to like dusk. Yes. So in, when those three nights are going to be uh, going to dusk, we are going to add candles uh, led candles led uh and uh lantern the big um squares that i have there the cubes are going to turn into giant lanterns i'm going to put light inside so they project all the color out to the walls and yeah. mm -hmm. it's a different look different experience with candle light mm -hmm. Right. And, um, and to remind everybody those days, that's October 31st through November 2nd. Those are the evening hours from 4 to 7 p.m. So we'll get kind of darker. So it'll be on uh, the uh, night of the arrivals and for the next couple days, huh? On yeah. the 31st and 1st and 2nd? Correct. Yeah. Uh, first, uh, first and sec well, first is arrival. Let me, let me know the, I don't want to yeah. even make so, a mistake here. Sorry, Letty. <laughs> It's okay. November 1st is the arrival. That's the day for the children. That's the day that the children are arriving. And then November the 2nd is the day for the adults and the elders. Mm -hmm. There you go, guys. And then, and, and, and the, the things that are placed on the altar, the, the water, the food is, you know, to quench their thirst, um, you know, for them to eat. Uh, you place things that were their favorite foods when they were, you know, with us. The, the, the candles, you know, light the way as do the marigolds with the aroma, the smell of the Sampasuchil. Uh, that's why there's also usually a, a camino or a path uh, for, for the spirits, you know, to come walking to. And then there's the cross up to the altar. Um, that is what is believed. Yeah. Yeah, Eric. There, um, there's a question of people asking how can they safely go and see the exhibit. Um, and so, yes. Well, we're the since it's in the outdoor garden, and we're limiting it to only 30 people uh, with masks required and social distancing. Um, so it's a to be a, a fairly safe experience and w within within the guidelines. So that's um, yeah. how people should be able to to be able to safely visit. So yeah, and 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 the 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 art is spaced also where people can just walk and and not be too close to one another. Uh, and then there are two people at the entrance welcoming folks. So. There gets to be too many people can kind of wait for some to go in and then others to leave to exit and then have others come in. It's like going yes. to get groceries. Yes. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Well, very good. Any other? Do you guys? Uh, any more questions? We're also, you're also welcome, I think, at this point, if you want to uh, raise your hand and uh, uh, you can be unmuted if you'd like to ask a question verbally. 
please do. We have a lot of answers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep. indeed. Peter, so what do you think? Next year, we're going to make animatronics? <laughs> I don't know. Between now and next year, there's so much. Uh, well, who knows what's going to happen between now and then, you know? But, well, you know what? Exciting, you know? We, we got to make it where it's always happy now. No matter how bad the news, it's happy. Exactly, yeah. And I, this is a very nice celebration of life that I think is very healthy in these times, you know, for of course. You know, uh, grateful for what you have, you know. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. All right, so we do have a question. Our first question comes from uh, Jeff Nathanson. <laughs> hey. Hi. Jeff, hey, everybody. Um, it's great to see you, and it's a, a fantastic program. Uh, it's not so much a question. I just, uh, as executive director of the museum, I wanted to thank all of you for um, the amazing creativity and your efforts and to thank everybody who is, um, has joined us this evening. Um, this is a membership event, so I want to thank everybody for their, their uh, membership and supporting the museum. And um, I was, I, I was uh, in the sculpture garden yesterday as the finishing touches were being uh, put on uh, all of the uh, various altars and exhibits, and it's absolutely fantastic. I just can't um, urge people enough to you know, get their friends and family and come out and, and visit. And uh, I think it's going to be particularly fun to go in the evening. Yes. Wait yeah. to see it at night. So anyway, thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Any, anybody else? Do you have any last? Last question, or any other uh, imagery you guys didn't cover, or um, you had in there? Well, the papel picado that was put there, go see it before it rains. Oh yeah, <laughs> right, right. Good, good point. Yes, there are going to be some potential casualties for you. No, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> I, I think in the future, this should be what happens. That if we have okay, uh, inside and outside, and yeah. uh, the people can go, thing. you know, yeah. take a tour. And because mm -hmm. uh, well, it's a different feeling outside, and you can get, I love that little altar that Leticia or someone who made it, or Liz, with the blanket and, uh, and the petals, the flower petals, and everything. That was so authentic looking, you know. Yeah. I've been to Oaxaca, and I remember seeing those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, isn't, isn't that the way one of those uh, unintended consequences of the pandemic? It makes you uh, kind of right. adapt in different Be ways. Like you're saying yeah. that it's something we'll, I think we'll uh, consider doing in the, in the future as well. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Hey. Well, I can't wait to get over there and look at uh, everything. <laughs> I you. know. Thank you, everybody. For yeah. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Yeah. Great fun. I really enjoyed this one. And yeah. I, I think the result is uh, going to be very pleasing and maybe a whole new venue of ideas will spur from you know. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, so much. And thanks thank for you everyone. very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, John. See you all at the exhibit. See you all at the exhibit. Thank you so much. Okay.